In 2021, Swinburne Neuroimaging launched a new organisation, Science Art Network. SCAN is aimed at facilitating interdisciplinary collaboration between neuroscience and the arts. The following readings represent a partnership between SCAN and the Australasian Association of Writing Programs, the peak academic body representing the discipline of creative writing in Australasia. We invited creative writing responses to magnetic resonance images. Sea Song by Julia Prendergast I say let's make our own way today, perhaps I add the word separately. I want to stretch my arm out of the car window, blast the sea song on repeat, belt the chorus at the top of my voice. I want to sing it on loop like a clawing memory, spinning my wrist and curling my fingers to the instrumental riff. As if I'm back there, night dancing and sea licked air, the spindly soft grass against my calves, my skin seething and drawing in on itself, sweaty, salt-tongued madness. Charybdis was a sea monster, later rationalised as a whirlpool. Before she displeased Zeus, she was a nymph. Fuck this thinking, I merely suggested that we part for a day. Your eye, you say, the blood vessels in my eye have burst, smatter shot in all directions and spark lit like fine red kelp under my eyeball's glassy pane, bristling beneath your torchlight gaze. It's nothing, I say, a trapped bruise. In the eye, the blood has nowhere to go. I don't care for your displeasure. I turn away. I can't see you anyway. My pulverised eyeball thrashing with underwater kelp snakes, coiled, cluster-fucking inversion. There is nothing shiny here. Of course, Charybdis exploded water. There is only so long we can suck it in and hold it there. I want to sing the sea song over and over again until I'm beneath the surface and what never happened feels real until you're here with me in the cool heat of underwater blood snakes. Let me give in and be asked nothing in return. Let this snake blood longing settle into my memory reel like a long exhale, like the relentlessly sighing sea, as if my memory is a form of snake skin. Still Living in My Head by Catherine Coles. Still living in my head, I grow used to the way I come to myself, then go in time. As one fire detonates another, ignition and spark, ideas charge, lighting a path and laying its own land. Feel an eye scanning. Will I ever know how to read what may go missing or wrong, or what structure makes the abstract work when thought becomes mist or a kind of breathing? If the world arrives, as it does, on curatable, piecemeal, and incurable flash at a time, to me it repairs into whole body, where I forget to see myself thinking. So my rooms fill windows with delight and air and hold dark corners tight. And this other thing, alien and full of shadows, could also make pleasure a kind of space. COVID dreaming, Shady Cosgrove. Your message, the playlist, you're breaking up with me. I saw a band tonight for the first time in over a year. Shoulder to shoulder, strangers bumping into each other. My hand brushes a woman's waist. A colleague's up there, standing in front of the stage. Something's changed since we were in the office, the slope of his shoulders, maybe. Lights cast yellow-orange the saxophone radiates, the intoxicated fury of bodies near each other. We know what it means now to be pack animals. We are waking up. 
The girls in the restroom, toilet door open, one asking the other, are your friends here? Can I call them? The smell of vomit as the drunk ones walk carried out, black denim skirt caught on her waist, G-string and butt cheek exposed. It makes me think of date rape, which makes me think of that client and the suicide attempt and the email about the mental health ward. But I'm on the dance floor and the beat moves through me and there's a voice that belongs to a singer who's wearing a pale slip that hugs her beautiful, sturdy thighs. She holds the microphone up on that stage like it's a triumph and I want her to keep singing as long as I'm alive. But the show ends and the lights come up, remorse, and that song by the Talking Heads plays. You know the one, you've sent it to me. You posted it on your wife's Facebook page when she found our messages. This is a photograph of you for JP. I'm Jen Webb. Your face at the north facing window, and behind the window, Borealis shines, billowing multicoloured scarves, its invitation to the dance. You dance pas de deux, him going in for glissage, you a jeté. Both of you stumble on landing, but no matter, it's just a tap on the edges of consciousness, it's just a ripple in the pool. And you dance on, step, pivot, step, till your feet kick up rainbows in the startled air. I observe from my watch house. I will not ask you to step out of the vehicle. I will not ask you to surrender your license. I'll dance with you, back and forth, in a tireless loop, determined that we will find the gold at Rainbow's End. Pomegranate by Paul Hetherington Red splashes of sunlight enter the brain That ripe pomegranate with its spills of seed A scarf in Morocco that was stained with blood You cradled her head until she sat up to say Leave me alone The sun was a lolly on a washed out cloth The vendor hoisted fruit on an intricate tray. You were suddenly flushed and had to sit down, thoughts running like animals in a long alleyway. Someone had promised to meet you, but they wouldn't be there. You knew it suddenly, as this injured woman returned your care, saying, he's coddled by passion, as if love were an egg, and grimaced in saying it. The Moroccan translator waved you off. Sunset was paint splotched on a wide board and your plane pointed at it like the tip of a brush. Prince and Dr. John by Dan O'Carroll. I have a friend, we'll call him Dr. John. I say have, but I haven't spoken to him in 13 years. Before that, maybe another 13. One of those friends, you know, deep enough for long enough, when you're young enough, to know that if life goes on and you don't see each other, you can always reach out if you want to, and the other will take your hand and they'll do their best. I remember dissecting a brain with him in medical school differentiating the lobes, feeling the strange cupped heft of it in my hand, wondering how what happened in there became what happened out here. Although, despite dropping out of medicine that year after losing my faith, Ireland was still Ireland then, some part of me thought, there must be more to it than that. And I see this image now, and I see John, not Dr. John, or even the consultant, Mr. John, on the other side of the surgeon's mouth. I see John before we held that brain in our hands, and I lost my faith and certainty. John with his white gait and national health glasses, 
tender and fierce in the uncertainty of his examined place at the Catholic Grammar School. I see us in the front room of his parents' ex-council house in Belfast, flicking through his brother's Springsteen records, uh, discovering prints of the revolution and the bone-deep, sap rising funk and swagger of them. Dirty mind, controversy, purple rain. I see John, and I feel 14 years old again, sitting in the back of a cheap school bus on the way to a basketball game somewhere in Wexford, holding on to my spending money so I can go and buy a parade. And I want to sit with him somewhere quiet and not say very much. Maybe give him the odd grin and see if he returns it with a nod of the head or a caught breath laugh of his own. Or tell him I love him and that I hope he and his wife and family are well. Because we're long past the halfway point of our lives. Which I could, of course, do any day of the week on Facebook. But reaching out means something different now than it did in the 1980s. And there's always much more to it than that.